this last part, and this is something that I'm um, quite interested in. I think this is this is how we take like fight back. When it comes to gaming the system, I mentioned that the problem with models is that they're only an approximation of the real world. And as a result, if you know the model, you can game the system. Have you ever looked at university rankings? The annual US News college and university rankings are often a top priority for many colleges and universities. WMDs, like the US News Ranking, and I, my understanding is that Kathy considers um, the U.S. News University ranking, the one that ranks all universities globally and in the United States, it creates unfair uh, systems that don't always benefit the broader society. Uh, and if we just revisit that U.S. News example, uh, the original uh, evaluation, like when it was originally created, um, it the numbers didn't come out quite right. So what they did is they kept tweaking um, the metrics that they would use until the Ivy League universities bubbled up to the top because there was this assumption that, okay, if the Ivy Leagues are on the top, that means that this ranking is correct. And so uh, what they had to do in order to fix fix the, the ranking system, uh, it, it kind of meant that the, the university ranking, uh, WMD, would focus on heavily on research publications, uh, technology, innovation, and ultimately the success of their graduates. But what it did not consider is just as interesting as what it did consider. They did not consider, they would not consider the cost of tuition, and they would not consider the return uh, on their education, the income return on their education, or it's called ROE for short. And so the result is a ranking system. So the US News is a wonderful ranking system for the top 1% for which the cost of a college or university is largely irrelevant. But it hurts the other 99% who cannot afford to attend universities at any arbitrary cost. And speaking of the top 1%, Millions are spent every year on gaming the U.S. news ranking. No surprise here, right? This gaming does little more than improve the ranking and um, increase the tuition of the university uh, rather than actually delivering results uh, for their actual students. So it, it doesn't really benefit you as a student, but it benefits the university and they end up charging more because they are a higher ranking. Uh, for example, in 2014, King Abdullah University in Dubai managed to land in seventh place worldwide, in like worldwide of universities in the U.S. news ranking, just behind Harvard and ahead of Cambridge and MIT. It understood that the U.S. news ranking model used both publications and a researcher's authority or their H index in order to determine a university's ranking. So the solution was simple. Just pay top researchers $70,000 a year to spend three weeks in a five-star hotel in Dubai and change their affiliation from whatever it was to King Abdullah University. Now, to be clear, and I, I want to clarify things today, um, it doesn't work today. Um, this hack has been patched, uh, and they currently, I, I was looking at their current U.S. news ranking, and uh, King Abdullah currently ranks 121 uh, out of universities worldwide, which isn't a bad rating, actually, uh, but it, it's not quite like Harvard, MIT rating, uh, just to be clear. But again, like people will discover your model. And, and when they do, like, that's how you game the system. Like, it, it's just a matter of you know what the model is or you do some tests, you find out what the model is, and you can game. You can game the system 100%. <laughs> so it, it is true. Um, now, let's do a fun exercise. You, you ready to do, do one with me? Uh, so we're going to come up with a model, okay? So let's, let's do one kind of on the fly here. Um, let's, let's pretend we're creating a model for an insurance system. So if we were to come up with a new model for insurance, should we include race? 
Yes, no. I think if, if you ask most people, and especially like you on the call, like I think you're you're like I'm preaching to the converted. Um, I would say most people would agree that come on, that's not a fair thing to include. That's that's definitely going to create some really bad biases. Uh, great. So, next question: Should we hmm, should we include a zip code? Should we put your zip code into the into the algorithm for insurance? I mean, it's just a number. Might seem fair at first. Well, many are gonna come to the conclusion over time, and I imagine like you're already there, that this is ultimately gonna result in the the lower income or the 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 poorer zip codes. Um, they're they're effectively gonna be paying more insurance. And so again, this is this system is not without bias. The problem is, it is very hard. Like, let's say you were to come up with a, like one of these models, one of these systems, it's very hard to create a system free of bias. Uh, while a first and a last name, like it might seem obvious that that would introduce bias, there are really subtle things, like even the time when you click apply for university or you time you click apply for your insurance, for example, might be enough to introduce bias into your system. It's really, really hard to get rid of it. So when we build models, we teach algorithms to discriminate. Uh, and the only way to avoid this, or maybe not to avoid, but to improve it, is to have others independently evaluate our systems. Uh, and for there to be this constant uh, feedback and iteration. So somebody has to be able to go into the system be able to test some things out, and then be able to uh, give some recommendations. So for example, uh, Joy Bulamwini, I've spoken about before, her explorations into facial recognition bias um, against the, uh, they call it the highly melanated or just black people in general, resulted in several big tech companies just saying, okay, we are putting a moratorium, we're going to pause the use of facial recognition uh, technology, at least for a time. Uh, and uh, as a result, like more work is being done to improve it, I hope, before it, it gets uh, pulled out more more broadly. And so I hope that makes sense. It's like it's not about getting it perfect. It's about being able to get at least enough transparency. I hope that this is what the new uh, EU regulation is going to do for us. It's going to uh, hopefully be a model kind of like the GDPR was a model for privacy. Um, some of their model for like AI transparency is going to be a model for us as well. Um, so my main takeaways uh, from this book, and I'm going to uh, go back to to the book, uh, was that weapons of math destruction, they, they take in, uh, maybe this one will be better. Yeah, weapons of math destruction, they take in large amounts of data. And they make decisions that directly impact people's lives with minimal critical thinking and even less opportunity for humane reasoning and exceptions. And it is this lack of critical thinking and feedback that makes these systems so dangerous for our society. Uh, it ends up preying on the poorest and most vulnerable and it fuels financial bubbles. It stops people from getting jobs. Uh, it results in longer prison sentences, and it hurts the very people educating our children. Uh, while weapons of ma of math destruction or WMDs have existed for a long time, they are becoming way way more commonplace. So it's time to move beyond just knowing if news is fake and move towards thinking critically about the math that holds us back. And to see past this mathematical magic show uh, and game the systems for the good of us all.